things in the hand belts. Always do an exceptional job at every time they play for us. We're very privileged to have them, part of our music ministry. Uh, just after the service, too, I, um, if you, uh, in the archives, we we'll have our new members there. Uh, the, uh, the for our four new members in North Texas, so please greet them afterwards and, and uh, welcome them again to our congregation. Some of you have perhaps have uh, heard a story. It's, a, it's an old story of the volunteers. It's a volunteer Sunday. So we're talking a little bit about the importance of volunteering, the importance of sharing your talents. Volunteers from the congregation gather with, gather with their pastor on a Saturday morning to, to paint the exterior of, a, of an old country church. But halfway through the project, though, they, they ran out of paint. So the congregational volunteers turned to the pastor and, and said, uh, what do we do now? He said, you're our leader. He said, well, it's simple. You just uh, pour some water into the paint. It'll, it'll go a lot further. So they did what the pastor asked them to do, and they finished the job. But just then a huge thunderstorm rolled, rolled in, washed all the diluted paint off the building. Discouraged, disheartened, the parishioners turned again to the pastor and said, now, now, what, now what do we do? He kind of got us into this mess. He said, well, get down on your hands and knees and pray for God's guidance. And just then, uh, the sky opened up and a, with a big booming voice coming from above, repaint, repaint. <laughs> and thin no more. <laughs> Did you ever go to a teacher, parent? I heard some booing out there, eh? <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you ever go to a, a parent-teacher uh, conference and, and hear the words, your son or daughter has so much potential? Well, it's usually a code for a saying that your son or daughter is falling short of what they're capable of doing. A good ministerial friend of mine had a son who was enormously gifted in intellect and musicianship and athletics, personality, had it all going for him, but never came close to realizing his potential. We well, often hear my friends lament, oh, he's got so much potential. I can imagine that many, many coaches uh, have witnessed many athletes on the field or on the court who never quite live up to their playing potential. Or the musician who many thought uh, his or her career would take off to extraordinary heights but never fulfilled expectations. The talent was there but not necessarily a desire. Consider a number of people who underperform in their respective jobs and positions when Usually all it takes is, is working harder with a better attitude and a more thoughtful application to day-to-day -day responsibilities. Consider a number of people who fall in the category of that, you know, that old expression, woulda, coulda, shoulda, never employing adequately their talents. The point is that there are many who bury too many of their talents in the ground and never realize their potential, including what they could do to advance the kingdom of God. All of this is not too unlike the parable of the talents read for us this morning by Daisy and, and Stephen. There was a landowner, as, as you heard, who gave each of his servants uh, talents to do with what they wished. Talent in those days was worth about three quarters of a million dollars. And to one he gave, five, or today's terms, he'd be worth about three quarters of a million dollars. To one he gave five talents, the other two, and the last one, one. When he called his servants in for an accounting of their work and what they did, the first two said that they had invested wisely and were able to multiply their original talents. But when the third came in, he sheepishly and reluctantly said that he feared doing anything with it, so instead he just buried it in the ground and consequently was reprimanded by his master. Jesus' point in all this was to say that we have been given blessings and talents and they are not to be squandered, they are to be used to advance the kingdom of God, similar to the way Nehemiah in the Old Testament and the Israelites uh, used their talents to rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem about 2,500 years ago. Tradesmen, laborers, engineers all contributed their talents to, to restore fallen Jerusalem. Each did his or her own duty to redeem Israel. And we should say that the need for help in the church, any church, hasn't changed a lot since the days when the church Christian church was founded by the early apostles. The church and the Christian faith never have quite enough workers, never have quite enough resources. As Jesus told his disciples in the gospel of Matthew, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. It's like the farmer 
who has a bumper crop of wheat, but not enough hands help to harvest, to bring it in and deliver it to market in timely fashion. Like the person who has so many orders for her, his or her product and not enough workers to produce it in time. Or it's like the restaurant that has a rush of customers at a particular time, but not enough tables. Like the world that has so many problems, but not enough volunteers to cure the problems. Like the church that has so many needs, but not enough volunteers to get all the jobs done. But there are many out there to give us inspiration for what is possible to take your talents to the next level. Like a man named Albert Lexi, who dropped out of school in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania when he was 15 years old, and he took up shoe shining for a living story delivered by Governor John Kasich of Ohio. One Sunday afternoon, Albert was home watching a telephone to benefit the Children's Hospital there. Albert was so moved by what he saw that he went down to the bank and withdrew all his savings of $800 and he took the money down to the hospital and he gave it all away. Hospital administrators found out about this and they reached out to him and asked him if, if Albert would like to come to the hospital to shine shoes there. Albert said he could. About two days a week, he went from doctor's offices to nurses' stations. He charged $3 for a pair of shoes, and he slipped that money right into his right-hand pocket, but he took all his tip money and he put it into his left-hand pocket, and over the years, he collected $100,000 in tip money, and he used all that money to help pay parents' bills and expenses for their children. So impressed was the city of Pittsburgh by that, that he was named one year philanthropist of the year in that city. Remember now, at age 15, Albert dropped out of school. He started his own shoe shine business. He took his talents and he multiplied them. You can see what can happen from a simple design and plan to use one's talents to make a difference in another person's life, other, other people's lives. I can see it now. Jesus says to Albert, welcome to heaven. Welcome at the pearly gates. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Jesus is saying in this parable that a lot of your talents not only lie in the abilities with which you have been blessed, but also in the resources in which you have been blessed. Jesus also implied in the parable that there are talent takers as well as there are talent givers. That is, there are many who think that the deed to their talents is in only their name and nobody else's name. Recognizing, not recognizing, the source and the author of that same talent or talents, the Lord God himself. So the attitude becomes, I will take the talent that I have been given, but I won't think too hard about giving at least a portion of it away. But Jesus said through the parable of the talents that meaningful discipleship is simply taking your talents, using them to help others, and to share the good news of the gospel through whatever gifts have been given you. A talent parlayed into the betterment of God's kingdom or simply financial gifts to uplift the kingdom of God. You as a congregation have unlocked many of your talents to help the sun shine on people's lives. You're the heart and soul of the Christian church. Christ needs you and me to use and employ our talents to help create a better church and a better world. We have so many volunteers today in our congregation, as you heard from Sarah, and what a tremendous outreach we already have. So many involved in such a variety of ministries. But there is much more to do. We are never satisfied. We never feel we have arrived. We never coast along thinking that we've already done our part. I remember delivering newspapers when I was in middle school, called junior high school then, kind of dating myself. Distributor dropped uh, 52 
Pittsburgh Post-Gazette newspapers in front of my house every morning for me to deliver to 52 different porches. No matter the temperature, no matter the rain, no matter the sleet or hail, no matter the snow in cold Pennsylvania, it was my job to deliver the newspaper to everybody on that route before they went to work. And if you couldn't do it, they'd move on to the next guy. Shortly after I acquired the route, my father asked me how many customers I had. I said, 52. He said, oh, are you satisfied with that number? I said, well, yeah, I enjoyed the people on the route and the chance to make a little money. He said, well, you shouldn't be satisfied. There are a lot of people on your route that aren't getting the newspaper. You should go out and get more customers. You should be knocking on all those doors, asking them if they want to subscribe to your great newspaper. So I went out Saturday afternoon, knocked on a bunch of doors, and got eight new customers. My father ended up giving me eight dollars, one dollar for each customer. And my distributor did the same thing. Eight dollars, one dollar for each new customer. All of a sudden, I had 16 extra dollars in my pocket. Well, my father said to me afterwards, though, had a parable of the talents, parable of the talents ring to it. And maybe that was in the back of his mind. Maybe now you know he's a Presbyterian minister, you see, who believes strongly and, and you reap what you sow. He was also a great believer in capitalism. He said something to the effect of, you see what happens when you put your talent to work? You see what happens? Everybody benefits, including you. And in the same breath, he said, don't ever be satisfied. In other words, the harvest is plentiful. Don't stand idle. In a similar way, we as fellow Christians should never be satisfied, especially with a number of unused talents circulating throughout our faith that have yet to be tapped to tap open the wealth of opportunity to serve in many fields of youth and adult education, music, teaching, stewardship, and missions. Ours is an upward call, said the Apostle Paul. Ours is an urgent call to contribute in some form or fashion to the ministry of Christ. I remember a conversation I had a man with a man from South Carolina uh, who was a tennis pro and a member of uh, his community church in his hometown. I asked him what the extent of his involvement was with the congregation. I liked and I appreciated the way he responded. He said that his form of service to his church was coaching one of its youth basketball teams. He said it in a way that he expected himself to have one, at least one form of service. He didn't consider it optional. You know, it's a great mindset to have. I expect myself to use my talents to serve the Lord in at least one area of ministry. And we know when it comes to sharing talents, we can receive inspiration from a variety of sources. My brother tells a story about a then 58-year-old New Jersey Army National Guard Staff Sergeant and a grandfather of six named Philip Lohr. Years ago, Philip Lohr fought in Vietnam, earned the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star. But in 2008, at the age of 58, he deployed to Iraq at the age of 58 with Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 113th Infantry as an infantryman. I'm aware that the Pentagon is often reluctant to deploy anyone within several years of mandatory retirement age. So the staff sergeant had to fight for orders to go. His 34-year-old son asked his 58-year-old father, Dad, you're too old, aren't you, to go? The father replied, old? What is old? Should a 21-year-old go in my place. Don't worry about me. I've been training for this my whole life. Said a specialist in Charlie Company about the 58-year-old Philip Lohr, what he's done and what he's seen and what he knows 
is going to save somebody's life. What better reason could there be to share one's talent? We are a talented congregation that has already shared many talents with many more to share. Let's take it to the next level. As Jesus said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You see the insert in your bulletin. I'm going to ask the ushers, I didn't give the ushers a heads up, to um, come for, uh, take, take about a minute to throw those inserts out and if nothing's on there that you want to do and if you want to do something that you, you haven't thought of then write it in on the back of that insert and in about 60 seconds the ushers are going to come forward and collect those uh, inserts